morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Jamie Photography. So today I'm going to um, take this image of the water castle in, uh, in Hamburg and uh, we're going to do uh, a process of this image, uh, do a sky replacement and uh, basically bring it alive. So the raw file for this, uh, this particular tutorial is in the comments below link for it is in the comments below feel free to download and uh, and follow along <clears throat> and i'll also please ask you to respect my copyright on the uh, the file so feel, feel free to use it as you will but if you do use it on social media just give credit to jamie photography that would be much appreciated so we're going to um, kick off with my normal workflow which is to look at the perspective and also to uh, to sort out the crop to look at whether the image is genuinely worth doing now i think we're in a good position here you can see i've shot for the highlights so this the the, the lower area is a little bit dark but we can recover those shadows as uh, as we know from opening that 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 up in a little while so i'm going to go down to transform first of all and i'm going to click auto just to see if that will fix the uh the perspective it's done a pretty good job actually this is this is relatively straight but we can check by going to guided instead and then picking up two areas where we want to have straight lines so this drain pipe on the on the right here we can we can select that with one straight line and we can take this drain pipe over here and we can take that as the second one and that will also correct it and also if we want to make sure we're level across the center here we can pick this end of the bridge here and we can go across to the end of the bridge there and that will uh, that will should should put that perfectly level I'm just going to recheck those positions just under the railings there and just under the railings there yep so that's perfectly level across there now and we've got the, the verticals correct so what we need to do now I'm happy with that is uh, I can click on the crop and go into the crop tool um, so what we're going to do with that is we're going to bring the bottom up. I want to keep this shadow reflection, sorry, in the water of the shadow of the of the water castle, uh, the the Wasserschloss as they call it in uh, in in Hamburg. And then I'm going to bring this over on the right here just to to take that dark area out there. And I'm going to bring this side back in also to try to put the 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 the, the, the water castle back in the center. And I think we're going to go somewhere around there I just want to move that over just a little bit see if we can find the relatively center there and I'm just going to bring the top down just just a whisker um, so now I want to see whether that's a standard size or we're close to a standard size so I'm going to go I'm clicking on the custom here if this if this padlock is already locked whilst you're in the crop tool just unlock it and then you can go and click on custom and then you get the standard sizes now I think uh, a 16 by 10 could work here so I'm going to click on that and there we go that 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 has brought it so if I bring that across there and just centralize that castle down and I think that works that works quite well I'm going to go with with that hit return and that's the crop that we're going to use now I'm not convinced that doesn't feel to me completely level across there it seems like it's slightly up on this side so I'm going to go back into crop and we'll go to the little angle tool there's a little spirit level um, logo here and if you click on that we can we can try again to to come across and it may be that the bridge is actually rising from one side to the other so um, so I'm just going to rotate that ever so slightly get that in the position that uh, I think that works better there we go so I'm happy with that now so let's uh, go to the basic tools let's click the basic sliders go up to the top on the basic tools and um, we're going to do the shadows I don't want to open them all the way up I think they're probably a bit too much if I go too far so I'm going to go to about 70 there and I'm going to bring the highlights down and um, probably again to about 70 I think um, this sky we can we can deal with that sky for our sky replacement so to do that, actually, I'll probably keep the the um, the highlights a bit higher up, minus 30, so it's bright. So we've got a nice sharp edge, and I'll bring the contrast up slightly as well. So it just gives us a really nice sharp edge, which helps when we do the uh, the sky replacement. So 
Um, I think we'll do the whites as well. So we're going to hold down the option or alt key on a window, on a Windows machine, option on a Mac. And we're just going to, whilst holding that down, move the slider. And if we move to the right, you can see that we bring the whites forward. And if we go to the, to the left, we see we go down. Now, what you're looking for is this top right corner in the histogram. You'll see that there's there's a little triangle. And as you move that up, you it will go to white. So that means you're you're actually now um, outside the data range. You you you're effectively clipped. So you want to come down until it's a color. So um, yellow is ninety five percent and red is ninety percent. So you can use red red or or or, uh, or the yellow. Um, so I've gone with red ninety percent. So we're well within the data range there on, on that side. And we can do the same. Still holding down the option or alt key we can do the same with the blacks and slide that down and you'll see we get a red and a yellow and we go to white when we start to crop now with blacks it's okay to have a little bit of uh, of black showing so i'm actually going to go about there because it really brings some contrast into the the dark areas so as you can see now our uh, histogram is a full range all the way across which is which is where we want to be so Next thing to do is uh, we're going to pop over into Photoshop. So we're going to right click on the actual image itself. We're going to go to edit in and edit in Adobe Photoshop 2023. And we'll give that a moment to open and load it. There we go. That's in. So here we are in Photoshop. So to do a sky replacement, we're going to go to edit sky replacement. It brings up the sky replacement module here and whatever the last sky you had loaded uh, or you used it will automatically pop that straight in uh, so you can you can use that that if you want to if you if you do the little pull down uh, button here on the right it will show you all the skies that you you have loaded into uh, into photoshop already to be used so you can go through and, and pick one from there and if you have your own uh, skies then you you can click this little uh, plus button down the bottom here and that will take you into your file system and you can find the, the the ones that you want to use so I'm going to probably look at one of these here that's quite nice maybe this one that works quite well as well so um, knowing which one to go with what about this sun shot here that also is very nice so Try and find something that matches the colours of the of the scene that you've got to some degree. We can alter that later, and I'll show you how we do that. Um, what about this cloudy sky in the background there? That's that's quite uh, that's quite good as well. You know what? I might go with that one. So now, one of the things you mustn't do when you're in this module here is click OK. Now that 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 would just take it as is. But we need to do some adjustments. As you can see, there's a little halo along the edge here we just need to sort that out so what you do what i tend to do is i just tend to click in this little gray space up here and that that means that you select the sky um, but you're not you're not actually jumping out of the uh, the module itself and then what we can do is we can use these sliders to really focus this sky where we want to be so our first job is to try to figure out this edge make that look all right so you have shift edge and fade edge are uh, of two two good sliders for working that out now some people tend to move the slider a little bit to the right, a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left to find it. What I tend to do is move a big chunk and see what it does. OK, so I've moved right over to the right here and I can see it. it's cut into the top of these buildings, uh, cut into the top of these buildings and the top of the, the castle in the centre here. So it's too strong. So you can start to back it away to see where it, it you're not getting it effectively. So we keep going back until we're, we're, we're still getting a little bit there on the on the building, not too much. If I go back further, I can see that uh, the halo starts to get stronger. So there's a balancing point that we need to try to find. So I'm going to use the fade edge to see if we can move that. So I move that to the left, and that gives us a much tighter edge along here. Um, it can look a little bit fake if you go too far. If you go the other way, it does it does the opposite. So I'm going to bring that in there, about there, and I might, I might take that edge up just a little bit more. Shift edge to the right. Now, also underneath this, you have the um, you have the brightness and the temperature, so we can make the sky darker, and we can make the sky brighter. Um, so I'm gonna go a little bit brighter because I want to try to work this edge away. 
and also temperature. Now I really want to try to bring out the colour in the sky, so I'm just going to go more to the to the right, not quite so far. Um, probably there, about there. Now underneath you have these these foreground adjustments, and what they'll do is they'll take what's here in the foreground, the detail in the foreground, and, and they'll help us try to blend it with, with the sky itself. So the foreground lighting slider, if you move that to the left it, it uh, or to the right, it changes the the transition between the sky and the buildings. And you can see here, if I go to the left, it's very bright. It doesn't look very natural. If I go to the to the right, um, sorry, if I go to the left, it doesn't look very natural. If I go to the right, it looks more natural. So I, I'm actually going to leave that right the way over to that side. You then have the edge lighting. So again, if I move that all the way to one side, it goes darker here. If I go all the way to the other side, it goes lighter there. So we need to find somewhere where it works quite well. And I think that's probably around about 70. And then uh, the color adjustment, and this is the really good one. It helps take the color of the sky and, and it helps sort of blend the image closer in. So if I go all the way to the right, you've got a little bit more of the color. If I go all the way to the left, it, it's much lighter. So I'm going to actually take that to the right to about sort of uh, 80, something like that. So that works quite well. Now, one of the things we, we do need to look at in a moment is this reflection in the water and how do we actually copy that? And I'll show you how we do that in a moment. I just want to check these edges again. So the second button down on the left hand side of this sky replacement, you'll see there's a refine brush tool and you can make that a little bit bigger. And what you can do is you can just run along the edge. And what it will do is it will just bring the edge uh, slightly sharper just sort of blend it together and take away any overlap onto onto the building itself so um, it's going to go along there there we go that works works very well okay now I'm happy with that so um, you have an output option at the bottom uh, and the two options you have is new layers and duplicate layer. Well, new layers will produce a layer for each of the actions that the sky replacement has done. So you'll end up with about five or six different layers. Um, I tend to just duplicate the layer because I just want this layer as it is. So I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, it's it's dropped in as a, as a background copy. That's the one that we are. And I'm going to unlock these. And uh, and layer zero is the original, so we don't we're not really interested in that at the moment. In fact, we can all, we can delete that layer. We don't we don't actually need it anymore. We've got what we want here. Now to do this reflection, what we're going to need to do is we need to make a, a copy of this uh, actual um, layer. So I'm going to right click up here and I'm going to duplicate the layer. Okay, and I'm going to call this reflection. Okay, I'm going to pop that in there. So the reflection is now at the top and the background is the bottom. Well, actually, I want the reflection behind the main image. So I'm just going to pull that down and drop it behind. So the reflection is now behind. So if I turn off the front, we'll see the reflection. So what I'm going to do now, I'm on reflection. I need to turn this upside down. We need to create it as a, a, a reflection. So the best way to do that is to use um, Command or Control A, which is select all. Um, and then what we're going to do is command or control T, which is free transform. You can find these in the in the edit bar um, and you can see free transform is uh, command uh, T or control T on, on a Windows machine. So th that's now highlighted. So I can right click and we have a number of options. Now we're in free transform. We can actually do a lot of things here. Very powerful tool, actually, the free transform. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to going to flick it, flip, flip it vertically. So now if I turn off the front, you can see the back one is upside down. So I turn the front one back on again. But I want to be able to see through the front uh, image so I can see the back image. So what I'm going to do is on the background copy here, um, I'm going to go up to the blending mode and I'm going to select screen. OK, so um, so I'm now the top the top layer is selected as a blending mode screen. I'm going to change over to the reflection layer. So I've swapped over to there. I'm going to go to the move tool, which is up here, top left, or you can you can hit V. And then when I now hold on to the screen and move it, it will move the background layer, which is the layer that the reflection 
and I want to bring that down so that we're getting effectively a reflection of the building and of the bridge etc but I want to see where that sky sits in the light if you can see what I mean from the down the bottom here so the pink lines you see mean we're dead in line that means we're lying if I go offline pink line disappears and there is a snap to center to help you uh, to, to hold that together so I'm just going to come down so we're getting a reflection of the bridge reflection of the lights and I'll see where the water is. I think we're going to be somewhere. Just trying to find where that would work well. I'm going to go there. So I now need to switch the top layer. So I click back to the top layer and I turn the screen back to normal. OK, so I'm only looking now at the top screen. But I want to be able to bring the reflection through onto the screen. So to do that, I need to add a uh, uh, effectively add a layer mask to the top layer. So the layer mask is down the bottom here. You can see it down here, a little, little flag with a circle in it. If you click on that, it will add that to this to this shot. All right. Um, so that that's now been added to the to the top shot. So um, what I do want to do is convert it from uh, uh, black to white so I'm just going to invert that so I'm going to invert that over okay um, and that effectively shows through everything uh, below here but I need to make that effectively all white so I, I need to select a brush which is B or you can pick it from here in the uh, in the um, menu I need to make sure that on one white so white conceals black re re reveals and I'm just going to um, I'm just going to put that up to to a hundred percent hundred percent occupancy of flow and and uh, and the smoothing can be at zero at the moment because I just want to paint that back. So we effectively got a completely white layer. You can select that, but I wanted to show you that to show you how how it works in terms of what's showing, what's not showing. If I swap over the colors, you can do that using these two little arrows here go to black or you can press x to move from one to the other if it's on black when i paint now it will paint through the layer mask and it will show you what's behind so this is the trick so i'm just going to command z control control z undo that so now what i want to do is take a lower occupancy say around about 50 percent and a lower flow the same around about 50 percent and i want 100 percent smoothing because I want to be able to blend this and I'm just going to make the, the, the mouse, uh, sorry, the brush smaller. And you can do that by using the square brackets next to the return key. And I'm just going to go back. And now if I brush gently in here, you will see that it effectively will bring in the reflection. I'm just going to come up through there like this. Just do that. I'm just going to through here and down here. And just paint that in yeah I'm not too happy with that I'm going to control Z I'm just going to undo that I'll take a slightly bigger brush and I'm going to try again I'm going to go back even further to where we started so keep command or control Z just to get back to where you started there I'm just going to try again there just to blend that in across there as long as you don't let go of the mouse it will have one layer of consistency because we've got the airbrush mode selected which is here if you take your finger off the mouse and reapply it, it will add more on top so so now we've got the sky duplicated and the building uh, to some degree I'm just gonna make the brush a little bit smaller and I just want to just brush that in a little bit more over there just to bring up the, the reflection of those buildings over there and the same across here I just want that bridge to be reflected in the water and the same here so I've got the reflections there sorted out but it doesn't look overly natural at the moment so the real key to this <clears throat> is we need to blur this slightly and blend it slightly and I'll, and I'll show you how we do that we first of all we need to select the reflection layer there we go on the actual image itself now now we're in there we can go to filters and we can up at the top here and we can go down to blur 
and we can go to motion blur. Okay, it's one of my favorite blurs actually. If you select motion blur, you can pick how much of a, a blur that you want and what angle you want the blur at. As you can see here, it's at 90. But if I bring it around to zero or near to zero, it will go across ways as opposed to down and up. And that can give quite a good effect um, for, for blurring it. What you can also do is you can do both. So that also works very well. So for example, if I, if I increase that blur from left to right, not too much. So we've still got some detail there. That works okay. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just make sure that's at zero. So it's left to right, there we go. You can click on that and just type in the number you want to. Click OK. Okay, it's not too bad. But let's go back to filter. Let's go to blur. Let's go to motion blur. Let's do the same again, but this time at 90 degrees. Right? So we're now going to blur it top to bottom. But we'll do less of a blur on top to bottom. And you can just try to find something where it works. If you go too far, it 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 it, it can look, look a little bit unnatural. So I just want to find where the sky looks looks right in the water there you see if I come down lower you can see the actual color of the edge of the clouds so it needs to be more than that so I'm just gonna come up and I think that works quite well just there I think that is working quite well so I'm going to go there at 223 maybe a little bit lower maybe about 200 Yeah, that works well. So I'm going with 200. So that's the second motion blur, this one at 90 degrees. I'm going to OK that. So remember, we are only doing it to the bottom layer. Um, and the, the bottom layer is showing through the top layer because we put a layer mask in and we just blended that through. OK, so I'm happy with that. I think we're ready to take this back into uh, back into Lightroom just to tidy things up. But before we go, um, I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to hold down the option key. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and I'm just going to work along the top and just make sure you can see there's some lightning conductors and bits and pieces over here. I'm going to go to the, the spot healing tool. Just going to work my way around. Is there anything I don't want in the shot? Is there anything I want to take out? Are there any, any things in the water? A little something there, for example. So I'm just going to bring these two, these two layers together. So I'm going to top, click the top one shift click the bottom one right click and then i'm going to go down and merge the layers so it's a single layer so whatever i do now it will be on the on on the actual layer so i'm just any any anything that i don't particularly like one thing i don't like i must admit a little thing there one thing i don't like is up here is this light the reflection of this light off this little piece of sign here so i'm just going to take a small brush i'm just going to paint around that just go around the edges of it make sure you overlap slightly and uh, I'm just going to let, there you go, that goes. And right on the edge, you don't want these uh, little bits and pieces right on the edge, like here, for example. It just takes the eye away from the image if you've got little things just right on the edge. You see there, there's a little bit of light just there. So just, just take those out, work your way around, make sure you're happy that... Uh, yeah, a little something there, something there. Nothing down there that's troubling. Now, I think generally, I think we're in, uh, just, take, just taking out a couple of little, maybe some of these water lines here, just going a bit far out the bottom there. We'll just, we'll just bring them back a little bit. Yeah, and I think we are, we're pretty well, we are pretty down there. So, so I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna put this back into Lightroom. To do that, I go to File, I go to close and I go to save. All right, don't go to file save as because although it will go back into the actual folder, it doesn't go back into the live the live sequence of Lightroom. So we're back in Lightroom now. So I'm just going to clear that out of the top. So we just need to do the final the final sort of process to to bring this image alive. Um, and one of the things I do like to do is is always to darken the image slightly, then relight the image slightly. So I'm going to bring this down by minus about minus one. There you go. You can move the slider like I did, or you can just highlight that that box and type in minus one, enter, and it will do it for you. Um, I'm going to uh, bring the highlights down just a little bit, not too much, minus thirty, 
and then I'm going to bring up the, the, the shadows again, just a little bit. So about 40 on that. So that's looking, that's looking pretty good. And I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance because there's some beautiful oranges there. Plus five on that. So now's the trick. What we're going to do is go to masks up here in the bar here, click on masks. We're going to just darken the top of the sky and darken the bottom of the image slightly. So we're going to use a linear gradient. We're going to pull that down from the top as such, like this. And we're just going to, um, I might even rotate that all this way. So we've got this lighter area will stay relatively light. So I'm going to rotate that and I'm just going to bring that exposure down a little bit more and I'm going to add some blue. So go to the temp slider, just, nope, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to add some more color to that. So just bring that up a little bit and a little bit of magenta just to balance that off. Now I don't want to darken the building here. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to subtract um, the sky, but I want the inverse of the sky. So I then click the little inverse symbol you can see here and uh, you can see the buildings uh, stay relatively uh, light on this side, but there's the skies darkened down and that's working quite well. In fact, I want to add uh, another another mask to do the same. So I'm going to right click on the mask and I'm going to duplicate the mask. Um, and this time on the second one, so I'll click and highlight, I'm just going to bring it back. So it's just towards this top edge up here now only. And uh, that's that's brought that back in. We need to do the same at the bottom. So this time I'm going to create a new mask. I don't duplicate that mask because we've got the sky uh, acting as a as a, a subtraction. So I'm going to go down to linear gradient. I'm going to pull up from the bottom left. So it's the opposite of what we saw up there. I'm going to just darken that down a little bit down this side. Add in a little bit more warmth like we did up the top. A little bit of magenta but to balance it off. And that's working quite well. Yep, that's very good. So I'm just going to add one more radio, a linear gradient, sorry, and down from the top, just so I can just bring that, that the very top down a little bit and just add a little bit more blue. So this sky is blue over this side. Can you see that? Just adding a little bit more blue there just to try to get the blue over this side. But I need to remove the buildings again, so subtract uh, the sky, clicking the inverse. There we go, so the buildings remain the same color. And we've, we've added the blue over this side as well. So that's working quite well. So next thing is create another mask. At this time, we're going to put in some radial gradients to try to relight the scene. So we want to light the, the castle. That's a big part of this image. And I'm going to take this in the center here like this. Slightly bigger. And I'm just going to brighten the castle up. I'm going to add some clarity to that. And I'm going to add a little bit of temp to that. There we go. That works quite well. Um, in fact, I'm going to bring the temp down a little bit and use the saturation so I get the greens pop a little bit more as well. So I can just bring that up and make that pop in the center there. That's working. That's pretty good. But I don't want this glow around on the sky, so I'm going to subtract the sky. Okay, so we've we've not got the sky in on this, this particular. There you go. If I hover over the, the, the mask, you can see that it's just the building and the lights there. So... So that's pretty good. I'm going to create another radial gradient and I want to light these lights up more. You see the lights that they've got here. What I can do is I can take a small narrow um, radial gradient here. I'm just going to pop it from top to bottom like this. So it also goes into the water and I'm just going to bring up the brightness on that, bring up the, con the contrast on that and really important, add some clarity, really pops if you do that. I'm just make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate this radial gradient here and I'm going to pop it on this one as well. A little bit narrower. There we go. Right click, duplicate the radial gradient and then I'm going to use that on this one down here. So a little bit narrower. Really important. I'm looking at this one, I think they're getting a bit bright. So I'm just going to do that. So this time I'm going to. Um, add, uh, sorry, I'm going to right click and duplicate the mask. That way I now can adjust these as we go. It's done three of them for me. So I can use them on the other side here because I duplicated all three. 
So I'm just bringing those over this side. In fact, I might bring that one over here and just use that one to brighten this area over here. That's looking good. Bring that one down a little bit. There we go. Yep, that's good. Now I'm going to duplicate, uh, no, sorry, I'm going to create a new radial gradient for these more distant ones. And I'm just going to put those in as we've done with the, with the previous ones, not too wide, just brighten them up slightly. Now, because it's further away, we, they don't need to be so bright. If I go bright, they won't look so natural. So I just need to just find the balance point, add in a little bit of contrast as we did before and add in some clarity there. I'm going to right click and duplicate the mask. I'm going to come across to this side, do these ones as well, right click and duplicate the mask and just work our way down, getting slightly smaller as we go. And uh, also just probably just backing off the brightness ever so slightly. And then I'm just going to take duplicate the mask one more time. And I'm just going to brighten up these ones in the distance here. Bring that down there. That works quite well duplicate that one come across to this side there's one there look we need to illuminate not too big there we go and then uh, i think i'll duplicate the mask on this one and take these down to do these ones here duplicate the mask almost there Maybe we can capture both of those with this one. There we go. That's pretty good. So I'm going to create another radial gradient. I want to try to bring these uh, reflections alive in the water here. So I'm just going to take a little, a little radial gradient like that and just boost the, uh, just boost it a little bit, add some more color to it. Um, bring the saturation up and just add that little bit of clarity and that's what really makes it pop down there and I might even just dehaze the image slightly you can see that there's ever so slight haze there um, when we're when we're doing that I'm just going to duplicate that mask a couple of times so I can use them around here I'm just duplicating the mask so there we go and I'm just going to make a little narrow one for that one a little narrow one for that one and just just finding what works i think that works quite well i'm going to just bring up a little bit of magenta on that shot there that's okay right click this one again duplicate the mask one more time let's try and grab these um ones down here in the water just going to make those a little bit brighter so they pop a little bit more right click duplicate the mask that one's a little bit too bright we'll just back that one off duplicate the mask again so this is the great thing you can literally just go through them and rem remember what i was saying earlier you duplicate the mask because you just want to copy over the settings if you duplicate the radial gradient it copies it exactly as it is and then it stays in the same mask so you if you move the slider all of them will change at the same time whereas if you duplicate the mask they're all individual and you can you can use them you can move the sliders separately for each one so uh so let's just a couple more over here we just want to just just pick them up even a little bit more a little bit more clarity even on those ones just uh they're a little bit hazy there in the distance just just uh click on that one duplicate the mask again couple in the water there duplicate the mask again and I think on that side I think I'm pretty happy let's do the same over here let's brighten these ones up let's just duplicate that a couple of times let me just get that bit there this one needs to be a little bit longer and a little bit brighter You can see it's light at this bit here, so you just want to bring that down a little bit so it's not lighting that area up. We'll right click and duplicate mask again, and then remember to alter them all slightly as well, just before 
um, you finish with each one because then it doesn't look like there's a, a sort of running pattern um, all the time. And I think I'm going to do one more here, just down here, and I'm going to just pick that up there. So let's just click on masks just so that we cleared that. So we've got some nice reflections down there. These are looking very nice. Um, I think this is a little bit bright up here. I might try and darken that down a little bit and maybe a little bit here. Um, and certainly this area here needs to be illuminated just a little bit. So what we'll do is go back into masks. We'll create a new mask, a new radial gradient. And what we'll do is we'll pull one in here, place this down here on the waterline, rotate it so it follows the waterline. You see that? Like that. Just rotate that. And then what we can do is we can bring the exposure up just a little bit there. And what I'm going to do is we're going to be quite abrupt here. I'm going to put some contrast on that. I'm going to put a big, 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 big handful of clarity there. And I'm going to add in a big chunk of saturation. So you've got some sort of detail going on down here. This 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 works quite well, actually. Um, and it just brings this sort of leading line from the bottom left corner along. I'm going to create another mask, another radial gradient to go on the other side, similar. And the reason I haven't copied the one from the other side is, is because this one's going to be very different. It will be, in essence, the same location. But what we're going to do is we're going to add in that clarity. But this time we're going to actually bring the contrast up as well. But bring the exposure down a little bit just to try and balance them off left to right. Um, just so they, they, they sort of look relatively equal. It's a bit bright here, this one. So uh, I'm just going to go pop back to this, this mask here. I'm going to subtract a brush. And that brush is going to have low flow, big feather, 100% feather. And I'm just going to brush in there just to, just to just darken that a little bit more. In fact, I might even create a new, a new brush and do the same. Just um, do a minus there and just darken that down a little bit along there yep and maybe a little bit in the water there just darken that down that's pretty good so um i think we just need to do the final touches now so let's go back to the basic function so we come out of the the mask so we can see where we are let's do some some final balancing i'm going to bring the highlights down a little bit more and bring up the shadows just a little bit more. Um, I'm going to brighten the whole image slightly using the uh, exposure. That's pretty good. Um, and I'm going to add some vibrance, which is color contrast. The more you go, the more contrast you get. So it can get a bit crazy. So you have to be a little bit careful with the with the vibrance. And then. This time around, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, HSL, the hue, saturation, and luminance. So I'm going to select saturation. And what I'm going to do is in saturation, I just want to bring the oranges back just a little bit. The yellow oranges here are a bit strong. So I can back those off um, down here in saturation. So if I back the yellows off slightly and the oranges off slightly, you can see it just, just takes away a little bit of the bite. If you go too far, it, it, it really sort of neuters the image almost so just want to take a little bit of that yellow out i want to bring the greens up this tree here this this rooftop here and these green along the wall here, along the wall i can bring the green up boost the green a little bit a bit of aqua as well just find where we are with that the purples and the magentas will really affect the brickwork if i bring that up you can see you can really add or if i bring it down you can you can sort of change it there so i'm actually going to come down slightly with the purple and i'm going to come down where should we go with the magenta? I'm probably not going to do very much with that. Minus six. That's where we are. So now we've got this image starting to look like it's it's close. Um, I think it still needs a little bit of something just to make it pop. So um, I might add some temp, overall temp. So I'm in the basic function. I'm just going to bring the temp up uh, just to about plus 20 there to make it pop. These we have to be careful with these these yellows and, and oranges. So I'm going to bring the vibrance back down a little bit. And plus five. That's good. Um, and I think we're getting pretty close now. Yeah, I want a bit more detail in the sky here. So I'm going to go back into masks. 
I'm going to create a new mask, a new brush. I'm going to have the flow at 50%, and I'm going to have the uh, feather at 100%, density at 100%. Brush is not too big, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and I'm going to select a big chunk of clarity, and I'm going to put a little bit more temp color into it and some contrast. And what I want to do is I want to pick up these lighter areas. So to, to ensure I pick it up, I need to make sure the auto mask is clicked. You can see it here, the auto mask. If you don't have that clicked, it does a general um, paint. If you have it clicked, it just picks up on whatever your cross is on in the middle. So as you can see, my cross is on that brighter part. So if I now paint through there, you'll see that it will it will brighten the areas where the, the cross effectively is. So what we can do is we can we can make those areas pop more, a bit more up here as well. And we'll just, just bring those up and the ones in the distance there, just make those pop a little bit more. And you can also draw into the cloud just to lighten. So the cloud's got sort of different textures and, and, and the like. So you get this sort of um, effect of, of bringing um, almost depth into the cloud. Can you see there what I've done? If I, if I lighten that even more, you can see it creates almost as though there's a hole in the cloud there. And it just brings a little bit more detail. I'm just going to change the size of the brush and do the same down here. And a little bit more there. And a little bit more up here, look. You see, just to, just to try to break the cloud up a little bit and make it look like the, the, there's more there's more detail in the cloud. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. This edge is starting to show itself just a little bit. So I'm just going to darken that edge down. So I'm going to grab a new a new brush. I'm just going to darken the brush down and uh, just take away a little bit of contrast. And I'm just going to go along the top of that there like that just to just to break that edge so it doesn't look like there's a a, um, a halo there. I'm just going to do the same with these buildings in the distance here. Just uh, pop that in there. And you know, I think I think that's pretty well done. I'm just going to go back into basics. I'm going to just drop down the saturation of the yellows and the oranges just a little bit more. But then I'm going to bring the temp up a bit more just to make it really pop. And I'm going to bring the magenta up to just balance off those colors. So not too much. Let's back off the saturation just a little bit. Yep, and I'm going to bring the exposure just down a little bit more like, like so. And then my very last thing I'm going to do to this, I think, with in regards to uh, masks, is I'm going to go back into mask, create a new mask, new radial gradient, take a nice big radial gradient here, like this in the center. And I'm just going to boost the center, bring some contrast, more contrast to it. And I'm just going to clip up the shadows just a little bit, bring down the highlights just a little bit. And I'm just going to add a little bit of clarity to that center of the image. And I think that is pretty well it so the very last thing i'll do is go to effects on the right hand side post crop vignette i'm going to darken down the edges about minus 25 but the really important thing when you do a post post uh, crop vignette is to always go to the feather slider and bring that up to 100 percent just to feather that out around the edges there and um i think you know i do think maybe take that down to minus 30. No, I'm going to stick with 25. I think we have it. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. So um, if we go back to the uh, to the before image, let me just find that. There we go down. So this was the before. And if you remember, we started off uh, here. And this was the, this is the after. So it really brought it alive. Not gone crazy with the sky, but just put some interest into the sky and, and, and sort of added... A little bit more um, just just to make it pleasing to look at so um, anyway I hope you enjoyed that I hope you enjoyed that it was fun actually I quite enjoyed that myself so um, if you did like it then please like the video that'd be great and if you like what I'm doing on YouTube I'd love you to subscribe and follow along 
Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to uh, put them in the comments down below. And uh, until the next time, bye bye for now.